Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering using ES Build in Rails 7. First part of this is just going to be a really quick tutorial on how to use ES Build. If that's all you need, you can watch like the first two minutes and click away. Second part will be using JSX and React to have a JSX enabled React application inside of Rails 7. So you can have a single page application or a spa app, which is redundant because it already has application in it, but whatever. Uh, that way we can hit all the buzzwords. So let's get started. First things first, there's two ways to do this. One is with a new Rails app, which I'll cover. Second is with the JS bundling Rails gem, which is what you use when you use a new Rails app, but also it's an option if you have an existing application, there's just gonna be some changes you have to make. So we'll start with a new application. All we really have to do is type Rails new. We need to name it. I'm going to name mine video, and then we need to pass in dash J. And then you have three different options. You can either use ES build, you can use, I think, roll up, or you can use Webpack. You don't need the pipes or the other one. So in this case, I'm just going to use ES build, hit enter. It'll create the video application for us. Okay, so now that that's done, we can CD into our new application and I can go over a couple things. So the first thing to note is when it creates this, I have Visual Studio Code open over here, it creates a package.json. Now this will only work if you have Yarn installed. If you don't have Yarn installed, you'll need to use like a sudo apt command to install Yarn or whatever, like Yum or whatever you use on your operating system. In this case, I have uh, apt because I'm using Ubuntu. Uh, so I just run funny apt commands to install a bunch of crap on my computer, but okay. Once you have yarn installed, you should see your package.json and you should see a proc file.dev. This is sort of important. So our package.json is just gonna have our dependencies, which is just gonna be hotwired stimulus, turbo rails, and ES build. It's also gonna have this ES build command here, which basically just imports the stuff from app slash JavaScript slash whatever's in there, runs a bundle command, a source map command, and then it throws it all inside of app assets builds with the public path of assets. And this is important because inside of app assets builds, you have your application.js and your application.js.map. Basically, it's just spitting everything out here, which is why you then have the ability to use it. If you only start your application, which is in a weird terminal again, if you only start your application with a Rails S, it's not going to run that proc file and that proc file is actually the thing that runs yarn build dash dash watch, which means it watches for changes when you update your application. Even if it didn't have the watch, it still wouldn't work because just running rails s doesn't run this yarn build command and this yarn build command inside of our package.json is this build command here, which throws our JavaScript into the asset pipeline is how I understand it. Again, I learned these things five minutes before I make a video on them. So you wanna run your proc file, which you can just run with bin slash dev because during the installation process, Rails tells you it's adding it to bin slash dev. If you're using the JS bundling option, which is an alternative approach, uh, you need to run two commands. So the first one is gonna be bundle add, and then you need to add this to your gem file, which is somewhere down here. It's gonna be uh, JS bundling dash rails. Once you add it to your gem file, you'll then need to run a rails JavaScript colon install colon. And then in this case, ES build other options are also roll up or webpack If that's what you would like in this case, I'm just going to use ES build. So if you want to follow along, use ES build, but okay. Once you have that, you can then just run bin slash dev it will start up both of those processes. So you'll see two PIDs. It'll then use the run yarn command to throw everything into the source map, and then it'll start the Rails server. So now we have both of those running. If I come over here and I refresh and I, uh, well, I guess I don't have anything here, but you can see we have our Rails app. So now let's try to actually see some JavaScript appear on the screen so that we know this works. For this, I'm gonna stop the server with Control C, hit Control L to clear the console. We're actually just gonna run a Rails G stimulus, and we're just gonna call this the React controller because we're gonna be adding React to the application. So this creates our app JavaScript controllers React controller, which we can then bind just like we usually do. We can go ahead and start the server. I'll just type Rails S to start the server. 
And then we just have a basic rail server that doesn't have the proc file running. So you can see what I mean. So we'll come into our, I guess not our views. Let's stop the server, type rails G controller pages home. So we have a home page with, or yeah, a home page. And then we'll just type rails S again. We can then come into our config and our routes.rb, hit control B to hide the side panel. We'll change this git to a root and this slash to a hash, which will make our root application be the pages controller home action. We can then close our routes, come up to our views, pages, and our home page. In here, we have two different options. We can either create a div, give it an ID, give it the data controller stuff, or we can just go straight to a content tag, which is the Ruby way of doing things. And then in the content tag, we have to tell it what type of content, which is gonna be a colon div. We have to tell it what goes inside of this. So in the case of a P tag, it would be this text, or the H1, it would be this text. Here, I don't want any text in it. So I'll just leave an empty string. And then after that, I'll give it an ID. I'll make the ID app because I'm gonna grab it from React. And then I have to tell it which stimulus controller I wanna use. For that, we have to use a data and then we need some braces. I'll come down to the next line and I'll give this a controller. And this is gonna be the name of our stimulus controller. So if we come back over to app JavaScript controllers, we see the react underscore controller. We don't need the underscore controller part. So we just type react in here. If we made a apple cart controller, it would just be the word apple cart in this string. Don't include the controller part, that's not necessary. That's what this controller right here is for. Once this is done, we can come over here and refresh, nothing will happen. That's because our React controller is empty. So let's go ahead and come in here and let's just run a console.log and let GitHub Copilot decide what text to put in here. It's just gonna say React controller connected. This will fire as soon as you refresh the page, but in this case it won't. And the reason why is because we're running this with Rails S and we're not running this with our, uh, where is it, bin slash dev command. So if we run bin slash dev, it'll start the watch process and the Rails S. We can then go ahead and refresh. And now in our console, we see React controller connected. So we're now set up and connected using ES build and stimulus. So that's neat, but let's take it a step further. Let's add in some React because everyone on Reddit hates it when you ask how you can use React. So let's just annoy all of them. It's like a five minute process. They can all come in here and be salty. Of course, they would never because they don't watch YouTube tutorials, but still, it's fun to imagine. So let's come into the connect. After the console log, let's just do a const app, and then we'll do a document.get element by ID, and we'll just grab the app element. And remember, in our home.html, that's what we have right here in the content tag is this ID. Once we have the app element, we can do a React DOM render, but then we have to import React DOM. So let's go ahead and let's stop the server. We'll hit F11, Control L, and then we'll just run a yarn add command because we have yarn installed, and then we'll add React, and we'll add React dash DOM. That'll import both of those. It'll take a second because this is a little bit slow. There we go, everything's done. I'll hit uh, Control L, and then I'll type bin slash dev again to run that proc file. We can then come over here and refresh this page. We can actually scroll up and we can see that it's a little bit upset that we're using a JSX syntax, but we'll come back to that. We'll come in here, refresh, everything is still working. Now, one problem here is we don't have this app component, so that's kind of cringe. So let's go ahead and inside of our JavaScript, create a new file or a new folder, call this components, and then inside of the components folder, we'll create a new file and we'll call this our app components. So we'll say app.jsx. We'll save that. We can then type RFCE inside of it to create a React functional export component. We can hit tab that does this. We can then save it. You can also copy this if you want to. If you can't type RFC and hit tab, then you're gonna to need to come down to your extensions in Visual Studio Code. Search for the ES7 plus React slash Redux native snippets extension, which really needs a better name, uh, but it has a whole bunch of functionality like that where you can just type RFCE, hit tab, and then you get this boilerplate. So if you don't have it, great tool to have. Once we have this though, if we come in here and we refresh and we scroll up, it should at some point start yelling at us because the JSX syntax extension is not currently enabled, whatever that means. Basic idea is right here, it tells us you can use dash dash loader colon period JS equals JSX. We grab that, hit F11, come over to our side panel, scroll down and we find our package.json. I'll hit F11 again to full screen 
I'll hit control B to hide the side panel. And then at the end here, we just paste that in. So after the public assets path, we then paste in dash dash loader colon period JS equals JSX. We can then save this, come over here and we might need to refresh the page or it might need to have the server stop and start because we're messing with the actual build command. We'll come in here, refresh, and now it's gonna yell at us that React DOM is not defined, which is great because we didn't have it yet. Inside of our React controller, we have to import React DOM, but we also have to import React probably, so we'll go ahead and import both of those things to GitHub Copilot. So we import React, capital D, capital O, capital M from React-DOM, and then we just import regular old React. Save that, come over here and refresh the page. And now it'll tell us that app's not defined. So now we need to import this app.jsx. This one we can do a import and we need to import the app from our dot dot slash components slash app. This actually needs to be a capital A app. Now, if we refresh, it'll tell us, well, first of all, our app is on the screen, which is great. If we come into app.jsx, uh, we change these divs to an H1. It might be a bit easier to see our super cool uh, React app here. But in our console, it's telling us, hey, react.render um, is cringe. It's no longer using React 18. Can you switch? Which of course we can. So instead of importing React DOM, we have to import create root with a capital R for root. And it's not from react-dom. It's actually from react-dom slash client. And then after we do that, instead of having this React DOM render, we then need to do a create root with the app call dot render on it and pass in the component we wanna render, which in this case is our main component. If we do this and refresh, our error goes away. So now let's just quickly create like a small counter application just to make sure this works. To do that, we'll say const, we'll create a count, GitHub Copilot already knows what we're doing. We'll get rid of this react.useState and just make it useState like every other application on the face of the planet. And then we'll import, in addition to the React, we will import useState. Now, the reason for that is this causes it to not error. If we don't import React here and we just hit save, it's gonna get upset for some reason. It tells us React isn't defined even though it's trying to use it. So we gotta keep React in the import to make it work, which is fine. It's like two seconds of overhead, it's not a big deal. Then we can come down here to our return and instead of just doing a basic return here, we can just do some parentheses like it's suggesting. We can pass in a div, we can give it a P that says you clicked and then inside of braces count, which is our use state times. We'll put like an exclamation mark there. And then afterwards we can do a button that has an on click with a function that just calls set count, which is right here, where we pass in the current count plus one. And we initialize count to have a value of zero to begin with. Once that's done, we can then come down here. We can click click me or whatever in the middle, whatever GitHub Copilot is suggesting. I'm not here to code, I'm just here to copy and paste. And then we can go ahead and save that, come over here and refresh. So now you can see it says you clicked zero times. And if we click this, you can see my uh, React extension is already showing you that there's a component here that's reloading in the browser. So we now have React working with JSX inside of an ES build application inside of Rails 7. It's a single page application unless you don't want it to be. So yeah, I think we hit every single buzzword we need to. Uh, the SEO for this video should pretty much write itself because I mean, it's like everything you could ever want inside of an application and everything that the Reddit users could ever not want. So I'm sure they'll be super thrilled to see this. Hopefully you can now go forth and make all the single page Rails apps in the world that you could ever want to and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.